Well, good morning. Thanks for uh, coming. Uh, like uh, Major Gurley mentioned, my name is John Rich, and uh, I've been a police dog handler now for almost 14 years. This is uh, my partner Grizz, and he's a Belgian Malinois and a Traverne mix. I'll be happy to spell that for you after the interview. Um, he will be nine years old this October, and he's a narcotics and patrol dog, which means uh, obviously he's capable of locating and alerting to four different odors of narcotics, as well as tracking and uh, apprehending, apprehending suspects. Which leads us into that date. Uh, as Major Gurley mentioned, DeKalb County had contacted us in reference to chasing a fleeing felon. And uh, K-9 Grizz and I arrived on scene and we started our track, pretty much standard uh, as most of our tracks go. Nothing really was different. <clears throat> And as we uh, track around the area of North Druid Hills and Buford Highway, we go into a swamp area, so it's heavily wooded. And we actually locate the suspect laying down behind some rocks. For officer safety reasons, we did not want to proceed directly down to him, but actually call him out and give him verbal commands to come out to us. And the suspect was refusing to comply with those commands. We felt from a tactical situation, he may have been baiting us down into a, a, a deadly force encounter. So we simply covered the suspect and K-9 Grizz and I attempted to make our way around the back side of the suspect so that we could uh, get a better visual on him, see if there were any weapons in his hands and so on. And as we were going down the, the hillside to uh, the suspect, the hillside consisted of a, a rock face of uh, rocks of uh, probably four to six inches in size. The rocks actually broke loose and Grizz and I fell uh, about 10 feet to the bottom of the, the hill. And when the rocks broke loose, it opened up a large cavern of yellow jackets. Uh, I immediately did not realize I was getting stung because I was being stung so many times. I just knew something was in my eyes, my nose, and my, my uh, mouth. I was having difficulty breathing immediately. My chest became very tight. Uh, I looked over at Grizz and he was laid down in the vegetation, covered with yellow jackets in his ears, his nose, his eyes, and where his lips met. Um, we couldn't just turn our back and run out of the woods because we had the suspect uh, down there with us. So working with the DeKalb County police officers that were assisting me on the track, they actually covered the suspect and allowed us to escape from the area. We had uh, pro probably a 100 yard run that we had to do to get out of the woods, at which point uh, I had already started having difficulty breathing and uh, it became very difficult to breathe simply because of the uh, blocked airway from all the yellow jackets in my mouth and nose. When we reached the parking lot, I was already starting to kind of black out from not breathing and I, and I want to give thanks to the DeKalb County Police and the DeKalb County Police uh, K-9. Uh, luckily they had a handler on scene which was able to take Grizz and uh, render aid to him until our other Brookhaven K-9 handler, David Fikes, showed up on scene. At that point, my fellow officers, uh, the supervisors on scene started trying to render aid to me, get the yellow jackets off of me. They were still swarming me by the thousands and a decision was made to put me in the back of a patrol car to keep them from swarming me. Right, by that rule. Sure, when the hillside broke and Grizz and I fell to the bottom of uh, pretty much I would refer to the swamp where the suspect was hiding in, uh, a lot of rocks and debris slid down the hill with us and sticks and rocks were tangled up in Grizz's tracking harness. He wears a, a nylon tracking harness that we clip our leash to and that was actually holding him to the ground so as I was pulling him, trying to get him back up the hill, he couldn't move and he was, he was stuck, which resulted in me having to go back to him and take his leash off, take his tracking harness off, feed his feet through the holes of the harness. It was very time consuming. The whole time we're getting stung. And we actually just left that equipment <laughs> there. We never have gone back and got it. But that delayed it and that, I would say, accounted for a lot of the stings we got. Um, initially, when this uh, this all broke out, I was on uh, the perimeter unit. Uh, once uh, once Officer Rich notified us by radio, he was uh, he located the suspect and called for additional unit because of the, the tactical aspect of it. 
Uh, he was he advised us over the radio. He was uh, he was holding a suspect until another officer could get out there with him to, to help provide cover. So I pulled off the the perimeter and went to assist uh, Officer Rich. And of course, uh, that whole incident broke loose. Uh, we got stung quite a few times. Um, Officer Rich and I, we st made our way back up to the parking lot. Um, we were but getting stung the whole time. Um, once we got up there, uh, some, we took our started taking our uniforms off because they were all in our clothing and we were getting stung underneath our, our shirts and pants and stuff. Uh, but uh, the decision was made that uh, that we were going to, the, the ambulance had been called. Um, they weren't there at the time. There was some, evidently some sort of confusion about our actual location for them to meet with us. So uh, Officer Rich got put in my car and we decided to transport him by car to to Grady for treatment instead of waiting on the, on the ambulance. Uh, so pretty much uh, we uh, we took off. Uh, traffic was real, real bad on 85 southbound from, from Buford, uh, from North Tree Hills. So, uh, I was running blue lights and siren. Of course, uh, Officer Rich is, you know, he he's, he says he can't breathe, and of course that was very stressful for for me. Uh, I was trying to, you know, basically make my way through traffic, trying to get him to to Grady. Uh, the whole time we were getting, both still getting stung while while I was driving him down there. Uh, once we got to Grady, uh, they were real good. They came out and uh, we helped him get inside, and they put him on a put him on a gurney. And, Started getting him the medicine he needed to to get better. So um, basically, I had all the I had the windows rolled down, but uh, but they were just wouldn't leave. <laughs> they, they, were, they were as I lay in the back seat, facing the ceiling, uh, looking out the windows, trying to not panic, trying to take shallow breaths. They were swarming off of me and just gathering in the patrol car on the ceiling, the plastic divider. Going out the window, I had no idea that I had that many yellow jackets still in my uniform. And even when we got to Grady, which I have to say the staff was remarkable at Grady, uh, by the time we got to Grady in the emergency room, I have a few memories of the staff commenting about yellow jackets were still flying off of me in the emergency room and they were having to contain them in the emergency room as well. Uh, physically, the pain, uh, it really wasn't that bad. Uh, I, the biggest problem was I couldn't breathe. It felt like I had 500 pounds sitting on my chest. I could not expand my lungs. Now, once the staff at Grady was able to uh, apply several different medications to me, it immediately opened up my airway, started breathing normal. At that point was when the pain set in and the pain was pretty extensive for about four to five days afterwards. The uh, recovery from my breathing took just minutes once I was at Grady. I'm not sure what medications they gave me, but uh, it was remarkable. And then the decision was made to keep me overnight. The doctors advised me that the medicine they, they originally gave me would wear off and I would probably relapse in the middle of the night, and that did occur um, around two in the morning. And I was given a second round of medication to help with the swelling and the problems breathing and then the next day I was released under pain management. And then over the course of the weekend, I began having issues again and had to be taken back to the ER by my family for a third round of medication. And then after that, that was only the issues I had uh, and it just became pain management. The pain was intense. <laughs> uh, my body is just covered with yellow jacket stings all over the place, and uh, it's, but it's gotten better. So that occurred Sunday, uh, woke up and it began swelling back up. My wife had to run me to the, the urgent care to get a, a third round of steroids. Yes, sir. The doctor explained to me that one, if I'd had allergies, I would have never made it out of the wood line, which I don't have allergies. I've been stung by yellow jackets many a time. Uh, to include just a few weeks ago while on duty, I got stung by 10 yellow jackets while Grizz and I were out searching for a gun in the woods. Um, but the doctor explained to me that the level of toxins or poison in my body were so high, that's why I had the difficulty breathing, and that's why it continued to last for days after the incident. Absolutely. The dog performed great, first of all. It was a fantastic track. We tracked across hard surfaces in an area where there had been multiple people. 
we crossed the fence. I mean, it was just a phenomenal track. So I was very happy with his performance. I was really concerned about him because, as you can see, he's an active dog. He's full of energy. And at the time of the incident, the last time I saw him, he was laid on the ground, not wanting to do anything. I also understand that the dog's body metabolizes different than we do, so I was concerned of the long-term effects of him. But uh, with, we immediately rushed him to a 24-7 vet in Sandy Springs, Blue Pearl. They're phenomenal. The staff is great. They gave him uh, the medications he needed. They gave us the instructions we needed to get him through the next few days. Uh, at that point, the canine community came together, Officer Fikes, the other canine officers in the area that I live in. They came to the house, they checked on him, they ensured he was getting the proper medication, ensured that he was eating properly and drinking fine, and they took care of him for the first three days until I could get back on my feet and at least start taking care of him again. Well, in the nine years of working Grizz, I've discovered, and any canine team will agree, the human, ha the human of the canine team is the weakest point. We are the ones that can't see as well, smell as well, hear as well, and we rely so much on them for guidance. And Grizz has got me through several difficult situations in the line of duty. And the last thing I wanted to do was fail him by not being able to remove him from the woods and get him the, the treatment that he needed. Like, like they've been brought up earlier, you know, most people have been stung, you know, once or twice and uh, not, you know, 50 times, you know, at once. But, uh, but they, we were trying to get his clothes off. I was, they were all over me too because I was down there with him. So uh, some, one of the lieutenant and a couple other guys were trying to help him out with, uh, with getting his, his body armor off and stuff like that because they'd gotten all up under, under his body armor and shirt and everything else. So, uh, so pretty much he was on his hands and knees. And, and sure, there, there was a, when we got into the parking lot, there was a, pretty much a cloud of yellow jackets around um, Officer Rich, and they were just swarming all over him. So we were trying to help him get his uh, get his uniform and stuff like that off. At, at one point, I did have to throw him over the fence, but for the most part, we were both. Uh, at times, I was even on my hands and knees trying to make it up the hillside to get out. Gotcha. Well, I was down in the in the woods with him when when the the whole thing started. So, uh, I mean, I, it was it was definitely not what I was expecting. To, I mean, you know, there's a hundred things that we're contemplating. You know, when we're dealing with you know, possibly armed suspect or something like that and getting attacked by yellow jackets wasn't was the the least of what I was uh, what I was thinking about. So uh, so when that happened it was definitely unexpected. I later found out once I came back to work and began talking to my coworkers, they they felt I was still close enough to the hive that a lot of them were coming from the hive and still following me to the parking lot. I've been told they were wiping them by the hundreds off of me. And amazingly, they were not getting stung the way I was getting stung. I guess for whatever reason, they were attacking me and flying past other officers. That's the reason the decision was immediately made to get me in a car and seal me off where they couldn't attack me anymore. I was fortunate. I didn't get stung nearly as many times as, as Officer Rich did. Um, pretty much the car ride, I'd been, the majority of the stings that I received were from being in the parking lot in the woods with with Officer Rich, um, so I felt nauseated, but I, I wasn't having like the the shortness of breath and difficulty breathing that kind of thing. Um, so pretty much, it was just like painful, just from the stings. Um, I was more worried about about Rich than than uh, than a few. You know, I wasn't really having as bad a reaction to it as as he did.